So the key question comes is why is event fit testing is needed uh, before using this kind of special respirator? So the name itself shows the it's a special respirator, special mask. So it does need special conditions as well in which it should be used and how it should be used in fact. So we are aware of the common surgical face mask which we all keep on using. And in this, let's not forget this N95 respirator is a disposable model. So it has an efficiency and also a limitation as well. And we may think that, okay, we would like to reuse it, but let's not forget. In high-risk situation, we should always try to consider that each uh, patient is a potential infection case and also the environment as well contains pathogens and maybe also the poisonous gases and all those conditions for which it is made for. So that's why it's not a good idea to reuse this. Let's use our brain as well for that. Similarly, the lower two models, it is a reusable one. It, they do have very special filters. I have used them as well. And we have very special uh, precaution measures as well. So after we have used it again, we have to wipe it off in a, a very sterile way to so that we should be able to use it again and again as well. So there are special steps for donning and doffing for which there are another two videos as well to which one can refer to. So we all are aware different masks are there, different purposes are there and that is one of the reasons we have to use such special kind of things in special times as like the COVID times. And as I said it, these are the ones which can be re reused again and again and again. But after special taking precautions during the donning and even doffing as well while trying to clean it with a uh, antiseptic fluid and all as well. Similarly, if we are there in a high risk area, for example, the intensive care unit, so we can use these equipments containing with a non-steroid suit as well. On an overall basis, this is how it looks like. So why is fit testing after all needed? As I said, it, it is actually a means of checking that a respirator face piece is matching the person's facial features. Let's not forget, everyone has slightly different facial features, the nose, if in the face as well. So what happens is the important thing, the respirator must be able to have an air seal. If there's slight leakage as well, you know it, I know it, we can get those pathogens, we can also get the, the toxic air which we don't want and that is why the seal is important. For the fit testing, there are certified professionals, there are certified machines actually which is used I would say initially and after the fit testing is done, then uh, it is advised that okay, can anyone use this mask or not? It's not like this. Just take the mask and start to using it. Not at all. So wearing the mask alone is not enough. There are correct ways. There are incorrect ways as well. And only if we wear them correctly, the filter will be able to capture at least more than 95% of the particles from the air which is going to pass through that. And I need not emphasize if it is not uh, able to pass through the filter for example if there are leaks in the side ways problems will happen and there is a higher risk for infection as well so there are various models of disposable models as well in this uh, what I was said about from my fit tester was the last two models we need not even use those visors okay the visors are those transparent ones which we keep it on the head I showed it to you so they but they are absolutely good models, but on a precautionary basis, it is better to use the visors as well, I would say. Now, these two last ones are the ones which is the half mask and full face models. So the good thing with them is, as I said it, they can be reused again and again without compromising the safety. But, as I said it, with good use of antiseptic solution, re-cleaning and following all the steps of donning and doffing. Doffing means like taking away these equipments after the procedure is something is done. So these concepts are taken from the Occupational Health Society of America 
and also from the NHS England website. Please feel free to refer to them. So one of the important thing is the face must be shaven. A lot of times, yes, people may ignore, okay, stubble is there, beard is there, a little bit of facial hair is there, it's fine, but it may not create a good facial seal. So, especially for the ladies as well, it is very, very important that the long hair is definitely tied back and the jewelry is removed. So, the first step is we have to take it with the reverse side up and using the tab, we must separate the top and the bottom panel of the respirator to form a cup shape. Then, take it into one hand, keep it above the face and then we take the, both the straps in the other hand holding the respirator under the chin. After that, we locate the upper straps across the crown of the head and the lower strap below our ears and straps must not be twisted. And then we can adjust the top or the bottom panel for a comfortable fitting. And then after that, we can use both the hands to mold the nose clip to adjust to the shape of the nose to ensure a close fit and a good seal okay and finally after that if we have closed it this is a simplification process as I said it there are special testing machines are there with which it should be tested because a lot of times we may not be able to detect the leak so after once we have closed it then we can try it uh, on our own as well to see if there is a possible leak or not so this is how a ideally well positioned mask looks like. The nose clip must be molded, the panels are definitely fully unfolded, the respirator should be well positioned on the face and the head as well and the upper straps and the lower straps should be uh, near the crown of the head and the below the ears as well and the straps must not be twisted. This is a special a respirator which is used for very very high risk zones and where someone has to be there for a really long long time uh, for example in the intensive care unit otherwise in the covid uh, wards as well i would suggest and as i said it is just wearing those masks is not enough because one should be able to treat each and every uh, patient as a suspected case and that's why even after we are done when the way in which we take it out as well it is very very important okay so that is why there are separate videos on donning and doffing as well and believe me doffing i mean is taking away that sterile uh, respirator or the gowns and all is even more difficult with a uh, lot of confusion at the different steps so that's why i would really suggest to watch these videos for sure so stay safe and remain healthy, only then we as professionals will be able to help others as well.